808 samples are cool. I'm Cozy Robinson, and I'm gonna show you how to properly use them within FL Studio, as well as share some of my personal techniques that I use to spice them up a bit. First things first, we need to find an 808. I have an old pack that I've had for years. Honestly, I do not remember where I got it, but Splice has thousands you can choose from, and I'm sure there's other places where you can download samples, where you can find cool 808s. So yeah, just do that. Now, if you watched the video that I made last week, this next step is gonna be really familiar to you. Once you've found your 808, take note of what note it actually is. If the title of it doesn't have the note, you can right click on the sample in the browser and select edit and pitch corrector. Now this is gonna open up new tone and it's gonna show you exactly what note it actually is. Now we just drag the sample into the channel rack, then we select it. You're gonna open up the second page by pressing this tab. Now we need to select the root note. Now this is super important. This is gonna be the note that the sample is in. This essentially just makes it so that we can use the piano roll and we'll actually be playing the proper notes. Otherwise, when you press C5, it's gonna be playing the original sample in whatever note it was originally. So if the sample's in D, you're gonna be pressing on C and it's gonna be playing in D, unless you choose D as the root note. It sounds confusing, but it's not that bad. Now, we're gonna stay on the same tab and we're gonna make changes up here. I almost always turn the attack all the way down. And the same goes for release and sustain. I usually go with one of two options here. I either remove everything but the hold and turn the hold all the way up or turn everything down besides the decay. If I go the decay route, I fiddle with it until it's the length that I want it to be. It really just depends on the beat and your personal preference here. So here is the bass 808 with a hold. And here it is with a decay. Now, depending on the sample you chose, you might want to do a bit more with it in terms of effects. Things like wave shaper, distortion, um, EQ, all that sort of stuff. Uh, you're going to want to play around with that, depending on the sample, again. One thing that I always add in FL Studio, though, is Maximus. I crank the lows up, and then I raise the master a little bit, just depending on how loud the, the original sample is. And this gives, just make sure that when you're hitting those low notes, you're going to hear them. You're going to definitely hear them. Now, if you add distortion, or you add a wave shaper, um, it's gonna sound best, most likely, you, you're, you're welcome to experiment with this, but it's gonna, in my opinion, sound better if Maximus and the EQ are later in the chain. So you're, the chain's gonna look like your distortion's gonna be up top, so wave shaper, distortion, whatever you want to use. And then you're going to want to have Maximus and then your EQ. And for the EQ, I like to cut the very lows so that um, it's not getting mixed up with the kick. You can hear the kick clearly. Sometimes, depending on the song, I'll cut the highs out too. But for the most part, it's usually just the lows because I usually try to make the 808 sound pretty cool. So yeah, that's how you properly use an 808 sample. I do have plans on showing you how to make your own 808 from scratch. So if you're interested in that, definitely subscribe. Or if you wanna, you know, support the channel, you could subscribe as well, up to you. Anyway, thank you guys for watching and I will catch you next time. So I might as well get high, let's take some drugs. I would both well, but I think I took too much. She said, bro, you need a chill because you're about to kill my buzz. I said, sorry, I ain't dying, bitch, don't let me interrupt. She said, I got just a thing, and she pulls us some more drugs.